Hello and welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are ready for the third installment of our interrail guide. What to pack for your interrail trip. Okay, so it's been a while since we released the last chapter for Interrail Guide. I think at this point it's been about two or three months now. So I do apologize it's taken so long, but there is a good reason for that. And that's because we've been busy with this little pumpkin. So yes, we got ourselves a little puppy. So this is Hashi three months old baby Shiba Inu and she's been quite the handful since we got her <laughs> but isn't she absolutely adorable as you can imagine we've introduced a puppy into our lives and we've been really busy just setting her in but yeah that takes up a lot of our times unfortunately so I haven't had as much time to record any videos lots of changes in our lives um, but happy to find some time to get around to recording this video now and get down. <laughs> okay. As I was saying, I managed to squeeze a little bit of time out to record this video, so I hope you all enjoyed this third installment. As mentioned, we're going to be talking about everything you want to pack on your interrail trip. So I'm going to first start off with some tips when it comes to an interrail trip, because in my opinion, a normal trip versus one with interrail is slightly different, so you might want to keep a few of these tips in mind when it comes to your own pack. A little bit later on, I'm going to grab Sarah and she's going to be in this episode as well. And we're both going to share a little bit of what we packed on our trips. We're not going to go into the full breakdown of everything we packed because at the end of the day, everyone packs slightly differently. So you're going to see what we liked on our month long trip around Europe and what items that we recommend perhaps you should bring on your trip too. Let's first start off with the tips when it comes to packing for your interrail trip. So tip number one, the best thing for you to do is to pack as light as possible. So with an interrail trip, it's quite different to a traditional one because to make the most of interrail pass, you want to be moving about as much as possible to really cover as much ground as possible, to see as many different places as possible. And that means that you're gonna be moving around a lot. So imagine if you packed this really heavy suitcase not only do you have to lug it around wherever you go, but you also gotta lug it on and off the train constantly. Think of this scenario, you arrive at the station and suddenly there's a platform change and you're having to run from platform five to platform two. You do not want to be carrying a heavy suitcase doing that mad rush. So as you can imagine, the heavier your luggage is, the more difficult it is gonna be for you to move around. You wanna stay light and nimble when you're doing an interrail trip. So tip number two is to check the weather conditions of each destination you're traveling to for the period you're traveling in. For example, on our trip we did in the summer, uh, when we visited France, although it was slightly warm, the temperatures was cool enough that we did need a thin jacket when we're out in the evening. Now compare that to when we were traveling in Cinque Terre in Italy. Uh, so this was only a couple of weeks uh, apart but in Cinque Terre, it was so much hotter, so much warmer. We needed to wear shorts, sandals, t-shirts. When we were traveling through France, we were happy wearing longer trousers and a jacket for the evenings. So you do want to pack with the weather conditions in mind. Having said that, if you are going to be doing um, fairly extreme places, so for example, the south of Italy where it's warmer and then you can go to the mountains in Switzerland where you might find snow and it's much colder. Perhaps the best thing to do is not to bring everything because your luggage is going to be absolutely massive. You're going to be carrying so much around. You might be better off just buying clothing when you get to a certain place. I recommend bringing your more expensive items such as your winter clothes and then buying the more summery clothes when you get there. Um, as those generally are cheaper items. That way you don't have to lug around so many items with you throughout the whole of the trip. Tip number three is gonna be go with backpacking. I highly recommend using a backpack, a large one, 
when you're doing interrail trip. It's just much easier to get on board a train, find your seat and sit down. It's just so much simpler. If your bag is very big though, you might still need to put it in the luggage area, but still getting on board with a backpack is way easier than lugging a suitcase around. Sarah has a slightly different approach to this and I'll leave it to her to explain a little bit later on. Tip number four is gonna be bring a day bag. So this is a smaller bag than the bigger one that you might have with you. So even if you have a suitcase, bring a smaller bag. That way, when you're out exploring, you can still have a small bag on you to keep your possessions like your camera or your passport or anything that's more important, you can keep it on you. And also, it's just, if your bag is too big to fit on the overhead bins when you're on a train, you can put your more expensive items or more important items like your passports in your smaller day bag and keep that with you. It is safer to have your possessions on you, of course, than it is to have it in the luggage area, which might be a little bit of a distance from you. You can't always keep your eyes on your own bag. So how do you carry two different bags? There's two real ways of doing it. One is to get one that's kind of foldable and packable. In that case, when you're moving from destination to destination, you're just using your big rucksack and you pack your smaller one away. Or to have a bigger bag on my back and then smaller bag on my front. The last tip I have for you today, so tip number five, is just to not sweat it. Don't worry too much about what you haven't brought with you. Because if you do that, you're just gonna get too stressed before your trip and you're probably gonna end up bringing too many things anyway. I think often people forget that when you're traveling, you can buy stuff when you're out and about. And actually, when you're doing an interrail trip, often you're traveling into main cities where there are shops and stuff near the stations that gives you plenty of opportunity to actually go and buy some stuff. Okay, let's get on to some of the things that we packed on our own interrail trip. So I'll go first. So starting with the bag, this is my trusty F-Stop Gear Tilopa 50 litre rucksack. So I use this bag on most long-term trips that I do. So any trip that's like longer than two weeks, I use this bag and it's been absolutely amazing. I do have a full video talking about this bag and some of my other camera equipment. I'll pop it up here. No, should we go over here? I don't know which way it is, but I'll pop it up on the screen anyway for you to click on and watch if you're interested in learning more about this bag. I won't go into too much detail, but I personally really like a 50 liter bag. I think it gets pretty much everything you need in there. And with my 50 liter bag, over half of it is taken up by camera gear as well. So I actually only have about 25 liters for my own like clothes, um, you know, what else do I bring? Cameras and clothes and uh, I guess more camera stuff. So anyone that does photography or videography while still wanting to travel, all of that kind of stuff, this bag is really my personal favorite. The next main item I recommend everyone bring is a camera. So whether that be camera on your smartphone or it's an independent camera, I think it's one of the joys of the era that we're living in is that we can document everything. So we can one day look back on all these fond memories and relive the experiences. That's the beauty of having a camera or these recording devices. The next item that on my list that I really recommend bringing when you're doing an interrail trip is an extension lead multi plug thing. These are amazing to travel with when you're doing an interrail trip because it allows you to go from one plug into multiple plugs, especially when they have USB slots in them as well. So this saves me from having to bring like extra adapters to charge the iPhone, to charge my watch, to charge my camera devices. All these USB slots are really good. And also the best one, this one has a USB slot, a USB-C slot, which charges my MacBook as well. So I don't even have to bring that MacBook brick with me. So that saves a lot of space. Another item I do recommend bringing is something to do whilst you're on the train, something to entertain yourself with. Although I do recommend enjoying the amazing views you can get on any of the trains in Europe, sometimes you just want to just relax. You don't want to just always stay outside a window. So bring something to do. 
Uh, I personally brought a little notebook just to write my experiences and thoughts as I was traveling along. I also had my laptop where I did a little bit of video editing and photography editing. All these things kept me busy on top of enjoying the amazing views and taking photos out the train windows as well. So bring something with you because you're probably going to end up spending hours and hours on the train. Okay, so another item I personally love to bring with me when I do interrail trips is a little fanny pack like this one here. So you can judge me for wearing a fanny pack. It's probably not the coolest item to be wearing, but I think they're absolutely amazing. They're super useful when you go traveling. I like to keep my phone and stuff inside this so that when the train guard kind of comes along, you can just get grab the phone quickly and just show them your interrail path as quickly as possible. Sometimes when I put my phone in my pocket, I don't know if you guys have this issue as well, if I'm sitting back a little bit and relax, my phone can slip out my pocket. It's, yeah, it's happened a few times. So these fanny packs are really good, just making sure. <laughs> these fanny bags are really good, just making sure that your possessions are nicely stowed away, safe with you. Okay. So another great item that I love to bring with me when I do interrail trips is a kind of like collapsible water bottle. So the ones I like are like sacks like this one here. So when I'm not using it, if I just fold it up, if I just... So when you have it and there's no water in it, you can just like roll it up. There you go. And it's nice and small that way. It's just a really small profile and when I'm not using it, I can just pack it away nicely. Uh, and then when I do need it, it just kind of folds out. And there you go, you've got yourself a full on water bottle again. Okay, so those are the few items that I recommend bringing when you're doing your interrail trip. I'm gonna now grab Sarah and hand it over to her. So yeah, let me go get her. Hey guys, it's Sarah. Very asked me to show you guys what I packed for a Euro trip, so um, let me show you guys. Okay, so the first thing that I'll show you is my backpack that I use. I actually have a few of these, and Osprey has always been my favourite brand because of the practicality and like it's super durable as well. So um, this one's the 40 litre, but I actually used a 60 litre during my Euro trip and that included wheels, which I don't have with me at the moment, but um, it functions quite similar to this, but at the back, it will just have like a um, suitcase handle and some wheels, which then these can be like packed inside if, whenever I wanted to wheel it, just for like convenience. So the reason why I chose to have wheels on my backpack, it was quite practical. It's easier to drag around and it uses less energy. And obviously, when we do go hiking, I can just bring these straps out and uh, use it. So yeah, it's the best of both worlds and I absolutely love it. Okay, so what do I put inside? As a 60 litre, there is actually a lot of space, but when you're traveling in Europe, especially when we're traveling for months at a time, I need to keep things quite compact. But because we take photos, I do actually have quite a lot of outfits and it's quite hard to like squeeze it all in there without it looking like a complete mess. So um, I usually bring packing cubes and these are definitely one of the most helpful things I've had because I mean a cube size like this but I actually have about 20 uh, outfits in here <laughs> surprisingly. So it's definitely a lot more compact and like easy to carry around and like I actually have like a three or four of these so like I can categorize different types of clothing and things like that just to like keep it uh, a bit more manageable especially like when we're checking out or, or something like that and we're in a rush yeah so definitely definitely bring this um, and also the set also comes with like a toiletry bag as well so that's really like handy you can just hang things up without everything like spilling all over the place yeah, and it comes with a whole set. I guess one more thing that I always make sure that I have with my bag is a um, carabiner attachment. Just so, for example, like we sometimes hook things on the outside 
like shopping bag or something like that just uh, to kind of free our hands a little bit and um, I also sometimes use this to hook my Um, carry this around without it being squashed. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot more things uh, that I pack. But I guess if you guys do want to know the full packing list, and it's quite extensive, <laughs> but um, yeah, if you guys are interested, just let us know in the comments below and we'll see what we can do. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> Okay, I am back. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. But yeah, I think that's everything that we want to cover. Again, if you want a more detailed explanation of all the things we brought, just let us know. But for now, Hashi needs to get fed. She needs her dinner, so we're gonna go. But I think I've planned one more episode for this interrail guide. It's going to be on things we did and... No, do you know what? That's not catchy. Let's do it the top 10 things we recommend you to do on your interrail trip. That's a very working title. Maybe it will change by then, but you get the gist. Basically, we're going to highlight some of our favorite experiences, destinations, places, people that we saw, met, experienced. We're going to impart some of our favorite things that we recommend you to do on your interrail trip. So hope you guys enjoy your rest of the day and you can see this one is eating her food, so... <laughs> I'll see you guys on the next 